What's up, Team Hawk Alice? In today's video, I want to talk about the 100 day season. Have you reached your 100 day season yet? If you have, one, drop a comment. But two, if you didn't even know you could hit 100 days in a ski season, well, this video is here to help you guys hit that goal or just improve your goal, whatever your goal of day count is for the season. Some people have like 50 days for a season, 60, 70. So how many days did you also want for your ski season? Let me know, did you hit those goals in the comments? But I have some tricks and tips to help improve your day count, how to get more days in the ski season. One would obviously be, yo, it's late season. The ski season's not over yet. A lot of people think the season is over the moment their local resort closes. So if you're in the Midwest, the East Coast, you know, there's still actually a ton of snowboarding left in the season. It might not be the winter season, but the springtime, the summer snowboarding is actually incredible. So that's a great way to increase your day count is going like on a late season trip. But let's talk about the mid season, the early season, like the actual like heart of the ski season. First off in Colorado, did you know the ski season starts in October most of the time? That's rad. Getting those early day runs in, they might be a little boring because it might be one white ribbon of death, but you know, getting in getting those muscles back and like focusing on like yo I'm not here to just have fun I'm kind of here to like get my legs strong so that way when mid-season comes I'm gonna get more days in and I'm gonna be able to like physically be fit enough to get more days in so getting that early season work in also just summer training in general you know jogging running I like to ride a bike a lot in the summer to like keep my legs strong so when the season starts I'm physically fit enough to just start ripping now obviously your job plays a huge part in how many days you're gonna get in the season hey guys we uh, just got off of work. Today's the first day the mountain's open. We're gonna go change clothes real quick and hit the mountain. It's gonna be awesome. And if you work in, you know, like the middle of the week and you can only ride on the weekends, you know, you're getting limited to two days a week that you can go snowboarding unless you're like taking time off of work and things like that. But if you're kind of younger and you got more flexibility, getting a job that lets you work in the afternoon so you can come rip in the morning time is going to be a good bet for you. When I was younger, what I did is I worked two to 10 every single day and that allowed me to go snowboard every day. So I was getting on the mountain seven days a week. It was rad. Obviously, if you're older, you got that big boy job, you know, that's going to really limit you on like how many days a year you're going to get unless you get a big boy job at a ski resort big resorts like Breckenridge where we're at right now they have a lot of those marketing and office type jobs like HR and things like that so you might possibly be able to get that adult job that you have down in like the big city of Denver but you can get it up here and get more days in because what do you consider a day on the mountain you know some people consider one run you know that's a day on the mountain boom but that being said if you live on the east coast or the midwest any of these smaller areas that have night riding you know some resorts in Colorado do have night riding as well if you have that big boy job you can go night ride every single night and get those day counts up as well so if you really want to get out there and rip you know it's it's possible through night riding through working a different schedule or getting closer to the mountain the other thing about the 100 day season is it is actually exhausting it takes a lot to go ride five days a week to get a ton of days in to actually hit that 100 day season so you're gonna have to stick with it you're gonna have to be consistent so routines and things that are, that are gonna help you with your momentum i think is very important i remember when i was working at target if i didn't want to go ride that day because it was kind of nasty outside it was really cold i'd be like no i gotta go at least do one run because if i stop going and then I, if i don't go today and I can't ride the next two days, I fall out of the routine of going snowboarding and it's easier to not go once you've taken a break from going. So making sure that you go even when you're like not really feeling it is gonna help you get that day count as well. And sometimes a lot of those days where I'm like, I don't know if I actually want to go rip today, turn out to be the, like the best days, the most fun days on the mountains. Another thing that I like to do too, not to just increase my day count, but a lot of the bigger, higher peaks here in Colorado hold snow all summer long. So I love getting when and get an extra day you know, in the middle of August up at peak 10 at Breckenridge, because it's fun, you know, you can still go snowboarding in the summer. In Colorado, we have a thing called St. Mary's Glacier, which is a permanent snow field. You can always go get some turns there. There's a lot of places that will hold snow year round that you can get snow. And of course, the biggest hack to getting more days in your ski season is to go to Timberline in Oregon, Mount Hood. They have unlimited days, essentially. They close like late August, almost every single year, almost open year round. So that's a big way that I extend my season is going out there. As as well as big snow in New Jersey, which is a snow dome. That's a hack. That is 360 days of snowboarding a year because you know you can go every single day there because it doesn't close. One major hack too for like getting more days on the mountain is snagging an evolution sticker. For some reason it just allows more days to go out there and rip, which I don't know, it's kind of a cheat code. Snag one of those in the description. On the note of hiking up to resorts and mountains and things like that, if you get a split board, you know a lot of these resorts will still let you do uphill 
once the resort is closed, which is really rad as well. Or just the ability to go up any of these bigger peaks with a split board or just skinning on your skis. Also on the note of split boarding, let's say you do work a job at like nine in the morning. You can actually skin up the resorts before they even open. So if you become the early bird, you know, and you can skin up at six in the morning and get a little like early morning run in before the day actually starts. It's another way to increase that day count. Now, to some people, the day count matters. They gotta hit that 100 days a season. To some people, it doesn't matter at all. I know this was the first year that I like didn't count my days. I don't know exactly what I'm at. I know I'm at like 140 plus days this year. But if you're one of those people where you're, you're gonna set that goal, you're gonna hit that goal for 100 days a season, I hope these tips helped you. It gives you a little idea. Maybe you didn't ever thought about slip boarding or something like that just to help you get that 100 day season. So go out there, get it, crush it. To me, the most important thing about snowboarding isn't about how many days you get, it's about the quality and how good you're getting at snowboarding because let's just become the best snowboarders possible it's super rad and that's the whole point of this channel so if you want to improve your skiing or snowboarding hit the subscribe button we do have the strongest ski and snowboard community on the internet once again you can snag a sticker to support the dream and as always thanks for watching keep evolving we'll see you guys tomorrow in another video it's daily on this snowboard channel we do stuff like this daily